Hey guys, so in the last video, I was out mowing some rye and I got rained out. That was two days ago. Now we got sunlight again, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the mowing. Just got started mowing here and I heard my mower catch something. It's just a piece of plastic in the field, I guess. Got wrapped around the knives a little bit, I think. Yeah, over there. Yeah, it's not really wrapped up. It's just caught on the knives a little bit. These grain heads are just about to start popping out. There's a couple here or there that you can see, but it's perfect timing if we get it all mowed today, it's gonna be the right maturity. We're gonna have to lay it out like this, let the sun dry it, we're gonna tet it. Try to get it down to 60 to 65% moisture to blow into the silo. And we got these metal conditioners, rollers on the back of the mower. It'll all run through there, it breaks up the stalk. The stalks have a good bit of damage to them, it helps them dry out better. We had manure spread on this farm last week, so the rain was really nice to wash that in a bit. This field will be ready to plant corn into then. Looks like a fox running right up here along the crop. Let's see if we get a closer look at it. We have red fox around here. I wrapped up everything at this farm. So now I'm gonna head over to the quarry farm. It's a nice heavy crop, looks really good. Fields aren't muddy. Now I'm gonna start on this big field that we had cleared all those rocks out of last fall. And I also pushed the tree line back, gave us a little bit more space around the edges. Looking forward to mowing this now without all those rock knobs sticking up. following my spray tracks through the field so I can cut a straight line. I like to cut it into sections so I'm not driving across too far on the end. Oh, there one a white-tailed deer. We don't see a ton of deer around here because there's not a lot of woods. I know my dad would like to see that. I don't know if you can see the tail there or not. We have the right amount of deer that they're not a nuisance, but they're kind of cool to see. See them sometimes. They don't really damage the crops or anything. That wraps up all the mowing. Guess we'll come out tomorrow with the tether, spread everything out. Forecast is looking pretty good. Should be able to get the stuff dry this week. It's the next morning here. I'm gonna get this disc bind unhooked and hook up to the tether. We parked the disc bind in the old barn up there, go up the hill off the road. After this week, the house should be completely finished. Putting the HRV in today. The mower ran on a thousand RPM PTO. Now we gotta switch the 540 on for the tether. We rent this tether from our custom harvesting guy. Just don't use it enough to own one. Just a snap ring that goes around there to hold it in place. Depends which way you flip this shift pushes a button in there that causes it to spin faster or slower. Just gonna put fuel in the tractor and then head over. He's starting in one of the fields that I would mowed on Saturday before the rain.
can adjust a little bit lower if we need to. It's not really catching the dirt and it's getting everything, so I think that's good. We like to tent it, just flips everything over, spreads it out, and we'll let the air dry it. And if the sun comes out, it'll help a lot too. My dad will be working in the field for a while. I got some stuff to do around the farm. I'm gonna go ahead and bed the young calves up. I brought a scoop of sawdust out to the heifer barn as well. Last week we sold a bunch of heifers out of these first few pens. Once I get these bed up, I'll move them down some and create space for another group of nine young calves out of the calf barn. They would all be ready to be moved out now if I want to do that today. See if I can impress my dad and do it myself. We have two pastures out behind this heifer barn. Normally we let the dry cows run across the back and use the one and then we leave the last three groups of the heifer barn out this door. But to start off the year, we actually, we're running these two groups together out this door and then the rest of the animals out that back door. We didn't necessarily want the dry cows eating a bunch of that new grass. It kind of messes with their diet if they eat too much fresh grass. So right now there's just four pens that are inside the barn and then the rest are outside. not a ton of grass anymore, it's just more for exercise. I'm just gonna move some animals down, create a space at the beginning for some young ones. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I got the first pen empty. I like to brush out the water trough every time I bring a new group in. It's really nice with the slide floor. Water just disappears when you clean the troughs out. I guess I'll try to move these calves. Okay, let's see how this goes. There's a handful of young calves I want to move out to the calf barn. I got our little calf trailer hooked up because 
I don't really want to run the small calves in that big trailer where the older animals are running in. Don't know if they could pick up a disease or something from them. I'm gonna work in the shop here now on one of our robot scrapers. We're replacing the bearing that this ring rolls on. When it goes against the walls, rolls on this ring. My dad was actually the one doing this project. Got the old bearing pressed out, a new one in here now, and it's just a matter of getting it assembled again. My dad texted me about a couple branches that are sticking into the field over there where he's working. I'm gonna take the chainsaw. Actually getting some sunlight today, this ain't bad. It is the next morning here. We got a beautiful sunny day. We're really hoping we'll be able to chop this rye today. We're planning to put it in that stave silo right there. I'm hoping this rye will fill it full. We're gonna get the unloader lifted up to the top and ready to fill. So I just need to set the gooseneck down and shorten the arm a little bit. Then we can lift this up to the top of the silo. A couple grease points I'm gonna hit while it's down here. Got my grease gun. Yep. Ready to send it up. My dad's got a motor hooked up to the pulley outside. I'm gonna climb up the chute, close all those doors. That's where we were throwing the feed out as the silo got empty. So I'm working my way up this chute now. Just going through, turning off the openings of the door. The scraper. And then pulling the door closed. Feed on top of the doors too. lock shut so then this works as a ladder too for us to climb on i do have to be a little bit careful when there's no feed in the silo these latches are the only things holding the door out this way once there's feed inside the door can't open i try to put my feet actually on the concrete here even with the ladder i don't really want to stand on this if it would swing in so i like to wear a mask to do this because there's a decent amount of dust it's nice i can lean back against this chute just stand on my feet and have my arms to work unloaders at the top now about three more feet. Flip the breaker down there. I guess the motor is working pretty good. The fill pipe comes up the opposite side there as you get a snack sticking into the silo. It's a tripod up in the silo here, three cables, and then it transitions to one cable down in the feed room there at the pulley. Silo is ready to go. Here's the pulley in the feed room. See the triple cables just made it down. That's where we stop it. Good to go there. Now we're gonna go check on the crop, see how it's drying. First place we tended yesterday. Sunny and breezy today, perfect drying conditions. Someone else was using the tighter this morning. Dad's going to pick it up now because they're done with it. Decided we want to hit the fields one more time with the tighter to make sure it dries enough, at least some of it, to go in the bottom of the silo. We we're just working at this robot a little bit. Got this ring back on. Climbed up the outside of this silo. I just wanted to check on the distributor to make sure everything was straight. Gotta get used to being up here again. He tended some of the acres, not everything. We're gonna hook up to the rake now. We rent this as well. This hooks up to the three-point hitch. Two-point, I guess. 
I'm gonna head out and start raking some together now. Been running for a few hours now i'm just starting this big field this will be the last one definitely dry enough this field was only tented one time sunlight today did an awesome job drying it out a little bit of rough dirt along this tree line where we were digging out last year there's a section i got this tree out of here Dad's gonna take over the raking now. The custom guy just texted us and said he'll be here in about 10 minutes. I brought the inoculant out to the field. It's in this jug. So it's just a liquid that'll mix with the forage to help preserve it in the silo. So we hire a custom crew to come in and do our forage harvesting. It would be a lot for us to keep up with. With our size farm, it's nice to just pay somebody to come in, take care of the job quickly. First load's heading in. They got their blower set up on that silo. Definitely plenty dry. Good feed though. They've been rolling for a bit now. They got three tractors and carts going. These vertical tower silos, the feed packs itself. Makes our job pretty easy here. Got a beautiful evening, thankful for a nice week. They're switching over to the other farm now, so just about half done. I want it to yield a lot, but at the same time, it'd be nice if it all fit in this silo because I don't really have a plan B for tonight. I guess they could maybe come back tomorrow if it settles a little bit, we'll see. It is the next morning here. I had to shut them down last night because the silo got full. 
it settled some overnight. We got more space in the top. They're gonna be starting back up soon. The plan is to put the last few loads in this last harvest store silo. I'm gonna climb this silo and open up the lid a while. Getting a little bit more topsoil today. So this is our shortest silo. It's only 50 feet tall. Those other three are 60 feet. Out in the field now. I guess the chopper battery's dead, so we brought some jumper cables out. See, so left the light switch slightly on. So we got about five, six more passes in this big field. Just about full. I'm adjusting this a little bit to try and level it as much as I can. Okay, there it is. It's about two or three loads left. So it'll just be a little bit in the bottom of that silo. So we're gonna head up in this silo now and level the feed out, get the unloader set up. We got the silo leveled off here. My neighbor was helping me out a little bit. Now I'm gonna let my dad know. He'll drop the unloader down. The unloader's just got an auger, pulls it to the center, and a fan there blows it out the gooseneck down the chute. Okay, that's good. Uh, yep. Can you get it? You need my help? Or? No, I'll set it up. Last thing I have to do is pull the cord up the chute, plug it in. I'm gonna let my dad know and he can start it up. We'll run it just a little bit. It was nice it got full last night. We were able to top it off this morning. Got a little bit more in here than we normally do. Usually settles a good bit right off the bat. That unloader's good to go. So we just got about a load and a half in this small silo. I closed that one up. So all the rye acres are gonna get soybeans. And so that's gonna be the next thing to work at here is planting soybeans into those fields. We're not gonna be putting manure on those fields. So we go straight in and plant. So we'll get hooked up to the planter here. Get that thing rolling. We had our soybeans delivered this week. These are the higher leg soybeans. We gotta get this manure spreader out of the way and then we'll pull the planter out. Just adding some inoculant and a seed coat fertilizer. Stir this in a little bit and then we'll close them up. I just realized we got a leaking hydraulic line here. Take it out, I don't know how far back it goes. See this was wearing out for a long time. Down to the metal there. My dad ran to the neighbor, got two new hoses made. There was one that was leaking, the other one was wearing too. They started to wear, you got this metal piece holding them up. Keep them up when you're turning so you don't catch them, but it, it was rubbing on there. These hoses control up and down. The ones we're replacing are for the marker arms on the sides. Oh, 
I got the hoses hooked up. Put this piece of hose here just to protect it from rubbing against this metal. I'm gonna turn it on and try it, make sure everything's working. We have the arms locked up, but they're working. I don't see any oil leaking now. I got my monitor on. There's a sensor in every row, and these lights will blink for each row. Once I get started, and if one stops, it'll beep at me, so I'll know if the seed's not coming for some reason, if we're out or whatever. This will be the first pass with the planter this year. Got seed flowing. Checking seed depth here. Want to run about an inch deep. Yeah, right about an inch. Trenches are closing up pretty well. Sometimes if it's too wet or if the roots are too tough, it can just make a slice and you can see the seeds. It's not the best thing. I think I'm gonna set it one notch deeper. We're definitely not too deep. Just make that adjustment here. Just allows these gauge wheels to lift up a little bit more and the disc still drop into the ground a little deeper. Now I'm starting into this big field. Definitely some rough ground around it. I'm gonna go a little bit slow. I'm here at this section where I cut this branch out of the way. Just gonna plant straight through it. The beauty of what we're doing here, we have this crop planted in the fall, let it grow in the spring, just mowed it, harvested it. Now we're planting our next crop straight into that. There's roots and plants established constantly, holding that soil in place. We are gonna have to come in here and spray this off. This rye is gonna start growing back. Soybeans don't need nitrogen like rye does, so it's they can kind of coexist for a bit. But uh, I definitely don't want the rye taking too much moisture from the soybeans, so we'll have to kill it off pretty soon. I'm gonna keep running tonight for a bit. I guess I'll wrap this video up here, probably pick up again tomorrow in the next video. But we're trying to decide if we wanna mow our trade account now tomorrow or wait till after this rainstorm that's coming soon, so I'm not sure yet. We'll see what ends up happening. So thanks for watching, guys. All right, see you guys in the next one.